So this is the Model-Based Engineering Manifesto. It's a PDF available online. It was prepared and signed by a number of individuals, many of whom I know and respect. So what do I think of the MBE Manifesto? Let's take a look. First of all, I'd like to thank Bill Schindel, uh, an Incozi fellow who I recently saw at the Incozi International Symposium 2018. He pointed this out to me. It was work done by the MBSC Patterns Working Group when they participated in a conversation in Linz, Austria earlier this year. And the links are available at the bottom of the page if you wish to see the native source material. So the MBSC Manifesto states that its purpose is to motivate the transformation of model-based engineering. Obviously, I'm 100% aligned with that. They believe that faced with increasing system complexity, interdependencies, and the breakdown of document-based methods, MBE gives the transformation that we need. Well, obviously, I'm 100% on board with that with double exclamation point for the breakdown of document-based methods. Let's look at what principles they espouse. Valuing information over artifacts. Absolutely. Integration over independence. Eh, not so keen on integration. Expressiveness with rigor over flexibility. Absolutely, I agree that it's important to be rigorous and very expressive in the content that we tease out of SMEs and make explicit. So 100% on board with that. And valuing model usage over model creation. Absolutely. And that's one reason why I'm, I'm so taken with you know, the tables, matrices, other work products that I generate for my models. It's important to keep the usage in mind. Uh, you don't just want to model to model. So 100% agree. And I agree that the things on the right are important, but we can't sacrifice the items on the left. So I would propose one minor change. So if I had authored this, my list would look like this. I would say federation over independence. But that's a minor quibble. I agree with what they value. Let's look at the more detailed uh, commentary. First, with these principles, they think that we should emphasize describing the nature and content of the information compared to traditional emphasis on process and procedure. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I'm 100% on board with that. That again, we're trying to produce and consume the content to reach the end in mind and not getting hung up on process and procedure. So I agree 110%. They discuss how the semantics of the information that we're producing is invariant because of the nature of engineering itself. Mass properties are mass properties. It doesn't matter what language you're expressing them in. So I agree completely that uh, we are teasing out fundamentals of the systems we're working on. We may express them in varying languages, but it's the uh, underlying information that's truly important. They discuss how the credibility of the model is dynamically changing which I would agree, uh, you know, your, your stock price, so to speak, with your model consumers can go up or down based on the quality of the work that you're doing. They also talk about how some intended uses of models may put a higher bar for verification, validation, uncertainty, quantification. And I agree, you know, if you have a mass property to 10 digits in the model, you know, that may be overstating your significant figures. Uh, on the other hand, if it's really, really important for given, uh, downstream calculation that may be appropriate. So that is one thing that a lot of us do lack in our descriptive system modeling is uncertainty quantification. And so that's something we should all be mindful of as we go forward. But again, I agree with this principle as well. Talking about the human machine interaction with stakeholders and the use of advanced visualization methods and augmented intelligence to help people consume and interact with the model more uh, easily. I would say I would also have bolded the advanced visualization methods. I think that we should be focusing on ways to present data that we couldn't do before, and so I would have also emphasized that as well, perhaps even more so than the augmented intelligence. The MBE proponents talk about the need to have an extended team that has a common integrated understanding of the, the model information as well as its content. Agree 100%. Again, if you've watched my past videos, I think you would agree that that's something that I've been trying to push for as well. So nicely stated here. They're also looking for enterprise-wide reuse of model-based information. And I agree with that. Promoting content to libraries, packaging up model-based reusable elements, and, and carefully curating them. I agree with that 100% as well. They mentioned that systems engineering is required because the systems itself are also complex and evolving. I agree. 
So the bottom line is I do stand with the MBA manifesto team. I agree with you. I, I stand with you. I would have signed it if I were there. Uh, so thank you for this important work, and I hope that it's viewed as a milestone uh, in the development of model-based engineering and model-based systems engineering, just as the Agile Manifesto is regarded today um, by those who are practicing programmers. So thanks for your work, and uh, I really appreciate uh, Bill Schindel taking the time to point this out to me because I was not aware of it before this. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.